you know, in Barbados, we tend to have a split between technical and academic streams of study. What the qualifications framework allows you to do is have multiple entry and exit points from the system, uh, gradation going from top to bottom, and a mechanism for transfer from academic to technical and vice versa. So therefore, the national qual qualification, the NVQs will come in, the national vocational qualifications will come in, the Caribbean vocational qualifications will come in. The, um, the national qualification framework is then integrated with a similar framework for CARICOM. It links with the European qualifications framework and related frameworks. So if you're studying in Barbados and you, you do a course, the course will have X amount of credits and there will be transferability to any other place you want to do that course. So then the, this would be essentially a CARICOM NVQ then, uh, the, or at least a Barbadian edition. The, and the NQF itself mm. is the framework on which mm. all of these other standards sit. Okay. So on there you would have the CVQs, on there you would have CSEC, the um, CXC ordinary level qualifications. You'll have CAPE there. You'll have the transition from primary to secondary school. You will have all of the qualifications in terms of pigments. You will have all of the qualifications in terms of higher education from bachelors right the way up. And on the technical side, you will also have, if you say a master tradesman, what does that mean? That links in there. If you've been doing work for the last 10 years as a mason, but you don't have a piece of paper, it will also accommodate that to show that there is transferability for, for prior learning. As a result of the first tranche, a number of actions have in fact been undertaken that paved the way for the EU to commit further financial resources to the program. And the actions that have been taken um, by the government, they include institutional assessments of some government departments, the training of 600 public officers in human resource development, an increase in the number of government uh, departments uh, utilizing the uh, full human resource module of the smart stream application, a reduction in the time it takes uh, education providers to re-register uh, educational institutions, an increase in the number of persons accessing registered entrepreneurial training, and an increase in the number of uh, qualification programs approved and, and operational. Now, the release of this second tranche is particularly timely in view of the need to retool and retrain workers that have lost their jobs as a result of the current economic difficulties in Barbados. The next tranche will be subject to a review of Barbados economic performance. It will be linked to a reduction of the final deficit, macroeconomic stability, progress in public finance management, including oversight and transparency. Given the present economic climate in Barbados, fulfillment of certain indicators is important for the European Union as this would reflect fiscal prudence going forward. The EU has an ongoing dialogue with the government of Barbados on these issues. Therefore, the EU's uh, position on macroeconomic stability, and public finances, and transparency are very well known to the government. By way of background, I can say that Barbados as a member of the African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states is a beneficiary of uh, European Union Grand Aid. When we talk about Grand Aid, uh, let me make it clear that, of course, Barbados does not have to reimburse the European Union, which in my opinion is particularly important for a highly indebted small country. Human resource development was identified by the government of Barbados as the sector which it believed merited special uh, and very 
uh, merited a very special focus. And it is my hope that we will be able to provide um, sufficient evidence that we are on the right track before the end of the budget year, um, at the end of March. And I will be working together with the government of Barbados uh, to that aim. Uh, and uh, the government of Barbados will then provide the, uh, the evidence that we need in order to certify that the macroeconomic stability is in order and that we are making sufficient uh, progress on uh, all the, the various uh, economic variables that gives us the eligibility to release budget support. It is, um, it is what we call budget support. And budget support that means that the money is made available directly to the Treasury. And, and uh, I believe in, in Barbados you, you call that the uh, consolidated fund, but that is the, the, the Treasury. We release the money only when the macroeconomic uh, situation and the public finance management in general are uh, certified as, uh, as sufficient to, to use this kind of aid. That has been done now. And we do that each time we release money. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the program must show results. So the money is only released if the government has been able to demonstrate results along the lines that I mentioned um, earlier. So for the next release, there will be other results that we'll be looking at. So it is not uh, simply a bag of money that is given to the Barbadian government the government of Barbados will have to work hard uh, to receive this aid in terms of delivering the results to prove that the results have been achieved and, and along the lines that was agreed beforehand. So this is very much based body support on a dialogue between the European Union delegation here and the government. And only if all the results are achieved uh, can we actually release the money. But today it gives me hope that we are on the right track. And we will work very hard uh, with the government of Barbados uh, to make sure that uh, we can release uh, the next uh, funds on time. Um, and I'm also sure that once released, we will make an important contribution towards uh, uh, the government's uh, efforts, not just in human resource development, but also help with the um, economic situation the country is in at the moment. 